After being abandoned by his tribe, a weak young man teams up with a lone wolf to survive. Together, they will face large predators and ice storms on their journey home. Today we're going to recap the story of the 2018 movie, Alpha. When humans began their journey on Earth, the planet was merciless and only the strongest survived. In an attempt to adapt to the dangers of nature, they went out in groups to hunt for food for their tribe. However, even in large numbers, many ended up dying during the hunt. For thousands of years, humans considered all other species to be a threat, until one day a leader emerged with a heart so pure that he was able to see one of his main enemies as an ally and this friendship changed the course of human history. 20,000 years ago, in what is now Europe, a group of young men were preparing for their first hunting trip, in which they would accompany the other warriors of their tribe. Only young people capable of carving the tip of a spear by themselves are selected to take part in this mission and Keda is one of them. The young man is the son of the tribe's leader and, alongside the other young people who have passed the test, he performs his initiation ritual one night before leaving. His mother, Ro, fears for the young man's life and says he's not ready to hunt. However, Tao says that Keda must become stronger and prove his worth to the people, as he will be the next chief. Otherwise, his tribe will starve in the future. However, Ro knows that, unlike her husband, Keda leads with his heart and not his spear. Despite having grown up among warriors, the young man is sensitive and merciful, which makes his mother even more worried about him. The next morning, the men say goodbye to their families and set off to find food with the aim of returning before winter sets in. After a few days of walking, they arrive at a meeting point, where they await the arrival of another tribe, whose leader is a close friend of Tao's. At this point, she meets Keda and is proud to see the young man accompanying his father on a hunt for the first time. However, he has bad news and tells him that his son perished last winter, so he won't have the privilege of going hunting. The two tribes then walk along the sacred trail left by their ancestors to guide them to the hunting grounds. At various points along the way, the group sees a tower made of stones to indicate that they are following the right path. During the trek, they need to eliminate some animals to feed themselves and Keda is tasked with taking the life of a wild boar that has been captured by his companions. However, even under his father's pressure, when he looks into the animal's eyes, the young man is unable to complete the task, which leaves Tao extremely disappointed. At night, when they sit around a campfire to eat, they are attacked by a wolf, which captures one of the members of the pack. When the beast leaves, the rest of the group goes to sleep and, the next morning, they say goodbye to their companion who perished trying to complete the mission to find food for his family. On that day, the team has to cross a forest full of wild beasts and make a long journey until they finally reach the hunting ground. The next morning will be the big moment for them to complete the mission that brought them to that distant place. Then, during the night, Tao completes his son's initiation ritual, tattooing on his arm the marks that will guide him when he needs to return home. While watching the stars, Keda and his father realize that there is a pack of wolves watching them a few meters away. Hearing the sound emitted by the leader of the group, Tao takes the opportunity to teach his son a lesson. According to the man, the Alpha's duty is to look after his pack, that despite this, he is always in danger, as the other wolves in his own tribe will challenge him if they see any sign of weakness in him. When this happens, the Alpha will need to use his strength and courage to defend his leadership and Keda must do the same. A few hours later, after a well-deserved rest, the group arrives at the place where a herd of bison is gathered and uses the animal's droppings to mask their scent. While camouflaged in the grass, the warriors observe the creatures until Tao gives the order for them to begin the hunt. The plan consists of scaring off the bison and making them run towards the cliff, with the aim of bringing a large part of the herd down. This is a more efficient way of eliminating these animals without having to expend a lot of energy. In addition, by avoiding a direct confrontation with their prey, the men reduce the risk of being attacked and eliminated. However, when they see that their group is being cornered, some bison rebel and run towards the hunters. As he is the least experienced of his tribe, Keda is chased and ends up being struck by the animal. After falling to the ground, the young man can no longer get up and is attacked again, but this time his clothes get caught in the bison's horn and he ends up being thrown over the cliff. Immediately, his father and the rest of his group rushed to check what had happened to the young man and Tao was relieved to discover that his son had managed to avoid the fall. However, the rock on which Keda is holding on cannot support the weight of his body and the young man ends up falling onto a rocky surface in the middle of the wall. Desperate to save him, Tao tries to climb down the cliff, but is stopped by his companions, who know it's impossible to reach the young man. At that moment, one of his men claims that Keda is eliminated and says that the last thing the team needs now is to lose its leader. Knowing his duty to his tribe, Tao decides not to risk it, but spends several hours shouting for his son in an attempt to wake him up. That afternoon, after sharing their food with the tribe that had helped them on the hunt, 
she and his gang began the journey back to their village. In the hope that Keta will wake up, Tao and his companions decide to spend the night near the cliff and, the next morning, the man begins to come to terms with the fact that his son has left for the next world. Together with his friends, he holds a funeral in Keta's honor and, with great regret, says goodbye to the young man. Soon afterwards, the group began their journey back to their families, without imagining that, hours later, the young man would wake up. Terrified and not knowing exactly how he ended up in that place, Keta shouts for his father, but gets no answer. He tries to climb back to the top, but is surprised by a storm and decides to jump when he realizes that a torrent has invaded the valley. Hours after falling into the water, the young man wakes up in a muddy patch and realizes that his foot is broken. So he crawls into a pool of water to hydrate himself and then manages to straighten his ankle with the help of some stones. After doing so, Keta ties a piece of wood to his leg and walks with difficulty to the top of the cliff. When he gets there, he finds the tombstone that his comrades made in his honor and despairs when he realizes that he has been abandoned. Hearing the howl of approaching wolves, Keta runs for cover and tries to hide at the top of a dry tree trunk. Luckily, he manages to survive his first night on his own and has to feed on worms in order not to starve. That day, the young man is chased by a pack and runs back to the tree. While trying to climb the trunk, Keta ends up being bitten and his body is dragged down. To defend himself, he strikes one of the wolves with his knife and the animal can no longer walk. Some time later, the canids give up trying to reach him and end up abandoning the injured member of their group. When he realizes that his predators are no longer around, Keta plucks up the courage to climb down from the tree and builds a spear to prepare for the next attacks. Seeing the wolf that attacked him lying wounded on the ground, the young man decides to eliminate it once and for all. However, just as he is about to strike it, something inside him prevents him from finishing the attack. Instead of eliminating the animal, Keta ties its mouth to prevent it from being bitten and carries it to the edge of a lake. While cleaning his wound, he realizes that a group of hyenas is approaching and walks with the wolf in his arms until he finds a safe shelter. When he wakes up, the young man goes out to find some herbs and prepares an ointment for his ankle. Seeing that the wolf is conscious, Keta offers him some water and gradually manages to get closer to the animal, who is still not convinced that the young man intends to help him. As there is nothing but maggots to eat, the young man shares the little food he has found with the wolf and, the next day, manages to hunt down a rabbit. After feeding on the animal's flesh, Keta gives the bones to the wolf to eat and, with patience, manages to win its trust. During the night, while watching the stars, the young man realizes that his ankle has healed and decides that the next morning he will set off on a journey to return home. The trail will soon be covered in snow, so he needs to hurry if he wants to find his way back. So, after gathering supplies and weapons, Keta says goodbye to the wolf and asks him to return to his pack, as his wound has also healed. However, the creature refuses to abandon him and decides to go after the young man. Noticing that he is being followed, Keta tries to scare the animal away so that he can return to his family. However, no matter what he does, the wolf continues to follow him. After a few days on the road, the pair come across some wild boars and the canine lures one of them towards the young man, but Keta is unable to eliminate it. Despite this, the wolf continues to follow him and now feels more confident about approaching the young man. Until they left the cave, the creature wouldn't allow the young man to touch him, but now they even sleep together. The next morning, they both join forces to search for food again, and this time they succeed in their hunt. One day, after waking up, the two friends come across a large river with crystal clear waters and decide to stop for a swim before continuing their walk. During this time, they have fun together and have the opportunity to strengthen their bond. That afternoon, Keta welcomes the wolf as his companion and decides to give him a name. From that day on, the young man calls him Alpha and they become inseparable. Over time, the pair become capable of catching larger prey and together they improve their hunting skills. One night, while they are feeding around the campfire, a pack approaches and Keta prepares to attack. However, when he realizes that the young man is accompanied by a wolf from his pack, the leader gives up attacking him and leaves. When he realizes that this is the Alpha's family, Keta encourages his friend to go after them, even though he knows he will miss him terribly. At this point, the two companions split up and the young man realizes that he will have to continue his journey alone. A few days later, winter arrives and covers the entire trail. Keta's greatest fear is that he will never be able to find his way home, and he cries every night at the thought that he may never find his parents again. During his journey, the young man faces countless blizzards and, one day, he spots Alpha again along the way. Missing his friend, Keto runs across a frozen lake to reach him and ends up falling into the water. When he realizes that the young man is drowning, the wolf rushes to save him and helps Keto make a hole in the frozen surface so that he can escape. They are both in the middle of a snowstorm and the young man is shivering with cold. 
he quickly lights a fire and takes off his wet clothes to get warm. To help him keep his body temperature up, Alpha lies down next to his friend and uses his own body to warm him up. From that moment on, the wolf decides to abandon his pack to accompany Keda and the young man is relieved to see some fresh footprints in the snow. From a distance, he spots a person sitting next to a hut and runs over to him to ask for help. However, as he gets closer, the young man realizes that the man has perished and searches his stall for food. Unfortunately, Keda can't find anything to eat and suddenly starts coughing up blood. As well as being hungry and cold, he now has to deal with a disease that is affecting his lungs. Even at his worst, the young man can count on the support of Alpha, who stands by him despite all the adversities. Before leaving, Keda takes a bow and arrow he finds in the hut and thanks the perished man for his contribution. That same day, the pair face the biggest snowstorm they've ever seen while being chased by a group of hungry hyenas. With no other option, they have to run into the blizzard and hide inside a cave. However, to his surprise, instead of going after them, the hyenas run off in the opposite direction and Keda realizes that something even more threatening is approaching. Immediately, the young man picks up his arrow and prepares to shoot. Suddenly, a gigantic panther appears and attacks him. In order to protect his friend, Alpha jumps in front of the feline and, despite being much smaller and weaker, fights him off, as he sees the wolf risking his life to save him. Keda prepares himself and manages to shoot an arrow at the animal. At that moment, the panther is eliminated and Alpha manages to survive. However, the animal is seriously injured and can barely stand up. That night, while tending to the wolf's wounds, the young man thanks him for saving his life and promises that he will never abandon him. After Alpha recovers, they both continue their walk and Keda is relieved to find yet another stone tower, as this indicates that he is on the right track. As he trudges through the snow, his health worsens and he leaves trails of blood wherever he goes. He often thinks he won't make it home, and when he falls, his friend is there to encourage him. One night, when he sees a beautiful aurora borealis phenomenon, Keda feels energized, as he comes to the conclusion that this is a sign that his ancestors are lighting his way. After several days of walking, Alpha is very weak and can no longer go on. So the young man has two options, abandon him or carry the wolf in his arms and delay his journey. At that moment, the young man has the opportunity to fulfill his promise never to abandon his friend and, even without strength, he carries Alpha on his lap. When his body is no longer able to continue walking, Keda lies down to rest, never taking a single step without taking the wolf with him. Lying under a bed of ice, the young man dreams of his parents and this strong memory gives him the strength to continue his journey. Then, after several weeks of traveling, the young man who was known for being the most cowardly of his tribe finally returns home with the wolf in his arms. When he approaches the camp, his parents immediately recognize him and can hardly believe that their son is really alive. Relieved, the couple hug the young man and all three are moved by the reunion. While receiving support from his family, Keda says that Alfin needs help. Although they don't understand how their son could become friends with a wolf, Tao and Ro take the animal into their tent and the tribe shaman helps him to recover. Seeing that Alpha is alive, Keda feels relieved and, for the first time in a long time, truly happy. To his surprise, the young man discovers that his companion is actually female and is giving birth to her first litter. At this point, the shaman takes the pups and says that from now on, they too will be members of the tribe. Relieved, Keda hugs Alpha and asks her to rest easy as they are now one family. As time goes by, the two warriors fully recover from their exhausting journey and together they can follow the growth of the pups. From that day on, the relationship between man and animal was never the same again, because instead of being seen as enemies, the wolves became official members of the tribe. Since then, humans have never had to search for food on their own again and, when Keda took the lead, those animals became his hunting allies. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.